Hi, I'm George Kilpatrick, and welcome to Survivor Speaks. It's part of Vera House's commitment to acknowledging Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and one of our survivors today is Julie, and she's here uh, to share her story with us. And Julie, so good, good to see you. Good to see you. Too. We're Thanks. both wearing our white ribbon, as a matter of fact, and Absolutely. this is, of course, uh, a reminder to you that if anything that Julie says uh, reminds you of your own story, please feel free uh, to contact us at our 24-hour hotline, 315-468-3260. So Julie, um, let's talk about your uh, experience and your truth and how you ended up here. So, thank you, George. I saw a play this week, Possessing Harriet, the wonderful Kyle Bass, made some notes in the in the playbill specific to the play obviously but I took that so internally to this story because he talks about fact mm -hmm. as a thing that is indisputably the case and then he mentions truth that which is true or in accordance with fact or reality and so that has been swimming around with me and then the questions for today's uh, broadcast the truth it is the truth, this is my truth, mm -hmm. it's my life experience that I lived and especially in these times of questioning nationally on the national stage, I have to know that truth. That when I you said it. questioning the viability of survivor stories. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what you mean by that. Questioning their memory of it, questioning their um, record of it. We know that truth, that's deep inside us, it's written in us and will be there forever. Part of the healing process is how to use that story effectively, how to mm -hmm. use that life experience to help others. And this is what we're doing through Survivors Network here at Vera House. And yeah, the, the truth. What happened? An abusive marriage, a very abusive marriage. And as time goes on, even in, within the healing, I realize just how bad it was. Mm -hmm. I was recounting to somebody this past week in reference to something else. And suddenly this, a horror just went through me when I remembered an incident. So it doesn't leave us, it's just what do we do with that experience? Did you realize at the time you were in an abusive marriage, that you were in an abusive marriage? At the time this was happening to you or was it normalized for you as part of your relationship? In your, in your view, we know it's not normal, mm -hmm. but did you normalize it as just part of the relationship? I absolutely did and that is so interesting because that's spot on to how it was for me. I'd never experienced it before. I didn't know I knew it, but it was something that was out there, something you hear about. And then within the relationship, I thought, well, maybe how this is how this is on it. This is how marriage is, mm -hmm. because I had no other experience. And it's amazing how, even though I was living such a terror and such awful things, I was normalizing it, to use your word, normalizing it and thinking, this is how it is. And, and you also don't know where to turn. Mm. Um, I was in a different geographic location at that time and you like, who's going to believe me? Who do I tell? And you're very scared because mm -hmm. fear is one of the, the, the weapons that abusers use. Mm -hmm. you know. How did he appear, I'm assuming it's a him, mm -hmm. how did he appear in public to other people as opposed to how he appeared with you? And, and, and to say as well that with me sometimes he was an extraordinary person. Mm -hmm. And it's those two, those pieces of people mm -hmm. that make it hard for people to understand how they could be abusive. Mm -hmm. Because to his co-workers, to the people in the community, to friends, he was a stand-up guy. He had a good job, he was the perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. And that that also makes it hard to, to break down the, the barriers. Part of, was part of it for you also, Julie, that you also, in some ways, wanted to protect that very image that he was putting out. That you, despite what was going on for you, yeah. you want to protect that for other people. Isn't that something, right? Yes, yes we, um, and in all fairness, we do that for them. And we do it for ourselves as well. Right, because there is wearing the mask. Yes, wearing the mask. I can't say that, that it's it, words like shame, embarrassment, because we're culturally geared to mm -hmm. show everybody the good side, good side of everything. And that's not, living in the truth. Did you tell anybody? Not for so many years. Not mm -hmm. for so, so many years. And I remember, I do remember the first person I told, a 
and once you start to tell and tell and tell and reach out for services through Vero House, they have every um, service imaginable to support mm -hmm. women and men on that journey. How do we support you? Oh, endlessly and fabulously. So with advocacy, with support on the legal side, with directing me to the Scott Legal Aid Society, mm -hmm. to uh, aftercare of... Um, Did we help you get out of the marriage? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Um, because the first time I promised an advocate that I would call the police next time anything happened, that was me on a different path. And it's been a long journey, and it is a long journey. It's not always easy, but there is a life to be had after. So when did you, how did you get comfortable speaking about this in this forum? In some, in a, how did you get comfortable with that? Because it's, 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 it's not, it, it sometimes relives, the, reliving the experience is not always easy, right? That's uh, true. I heard a word yesterday, trigger, but then I heard another word, activate, right? Yes. It yes. activates the trauma that you experienced. Oh, yes. How did you, you get comfortable? I think, I think that's part of the healing journey you have. It, it behooves us as individuals to do that work. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work. Just bring in all the healing skills that you can or mm -hmm. are able to within your environment. Reach out to people, lean on people, find support services, and, and just be strong within your truth mm -hmm. and knowing that this is real. And yes, <coughs> excuse me, yes, you do get treated. <coughs> Very much so, especially in the international dialogue of fear. But I decided, so what do I do with this life experience? Mm. This has happened to me for a reason. Pay back, give back, thank Vera House, um, and just see if we can encourage others to come out of their abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, you, you made me think about that. Do you remember the first time you spoke outside of Vera House for the first time in public where you put your face to the to the story in your truth, do you remember that? What I remember m m is the very first piece I did, which was was sort of connected to Vera House because it was a project that my advocate here was doing, mm -hmm. and yes, extraordinarily powerful in that sense of getting the words down and then saying them, and then it flows, and then you realise all the other pieces. I remember talking about making sure that my son didn't become part of that cycle mm -hmm. and I would break the cycle at that point and I'm happy to say he wears one of these every day yeah. and he's there with that being a man in the best sense of goodness and kindness. We should say one of these is the white ribbon where we pledge to never commit, remain silent or support abuse of any kind and inside of course is our 24 hour hotline which I'll tell you once again is 315-468-3260. Uh, and you referenced this a little bit earlier. I'll ask you again what you think you would want the community to know so that they might feel that they can begin to speak their truth and, get, and begin their own journey. Because we know that it's individual for everyone and, 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 it's, and everyone has their own way of, of coming through. But if you want, if someone wants to and has been struggling on how to make that first step, what would you say to them? To know, and we've, we've been made aware of this, sometimes people keep these things silent for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. When it spills out, if you're ready to do that, just do it. Knowing that there are many, many people out there, and certainly at Vera House, who will honor that experience that you've had, honor that truth, and encourage you to, to a healing path, to a new life, and at some point, I would hope for everybody that they can talk as freely as I can, because that's the stuff that changes the world and changes people's lives, changes the national, we have to change the dialogue around this. A lot of people are interested in, when you first started working with your advocate, did you know what you wanted to do? Or were you just starting a conversation? Because a lot of people feel like they have to know. Did you actually know? You just started the conversation, didn't you? Started a conversation because I'd gone to my doctor recorded some more injuries and she handed me the brochure for Vera House. Physically abuse? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I come in and yeah, and it opened up such... What was, your, what, what was the first thing you said, do you remember, when you called? Um, I, think, I think probably still with that like slight denial piece of, can I come and have an appointment? Mm -hmm. um, 
and no well, you're like I, it's a little thing going on but I know this is not me but like if it were me what would I do is that kind of how you a no, person not quite no. like that okay. because I was over and I had finally accepted that it was wrong okay but yes there's a hesitancy and a scaredness and you're I mean you're opening up your whole life mm -hmm. and, and everything does change but it changes for the good mm -hmm. and there's always someone along that path and as you know, I'm part of the Survivors Network, and that's another piece in this journey. There's something at the end when you've got to the survivor place. What does the Survivors Network do for you? Oh, it's extraordinary because the energy in the room when we're all working together and we meet monthly, the energy is one of safety, of, of love, and mm -hmm. commitment, and Community. And community and safety and, and all those things that we aspire to have in mm -hmm. that thriving survivor place. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do extraordinary work. We can make a difference, get the message out there, show people, help people, guide people, and, and, and do this work, this raising awareness work. It's a lot to do, but we can do it, right? Absolutely, George. All right, Julie is a survivor. Survivor Speaks is part of Domestic Violence Awareness Month. This is our inaugural Facebook Live feed. So, Julie, you're number one. Julie, <laughs> so thank you. Amazing. One more time, we'll invite you to uh, call our hotline. You don't have to know what you need to do right now, but if you need somebody to talk to, our hotline is available for you right now. Here's the number one more time. 315-468-3260. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to have all the answers. But we're here for you if you need our help and support. Julie, once again, thank you. Thank you, George. Survivor Speaks. Hashtag Survivor Speaks.